Good morning. This is our second video in our SHP3 Seaberg Super High Power Amplifier uh, Repair and Restoration videos. Um, I mentioned in the last video, if you'd seen it, that the bias control uh, adjustments can be kind of problematic on these. So I thought I would just take a second to show you very quickly how to do that. So keep in mind everything that is on this bench is being run through an isolation transformer and I also have a current limiting system in place so that if I make a mistake I will not uh, become deceased that could be a really bad day uh, so I want to make sure I don't have a bad day so that's exactly how you have everything set up I would suggest that uh, if you're going to do something like this you're doing it at your own accord and you should probably employ the same type of safety measures because uh, even a smart person can be really dumb for just a second and have a really bad day as a result. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and just show you how to do this real quick, assuming you're using all the proper safety guards. Uh, we would put our El Cheapo meter or whatever you have in volts DC. And we're going to need to have a, a value of somewhere between 2 and 20 millivolts between our test points. Now, Seaberg was nice enough to put a nice little test point right here and right here on uh, the right channel and left channel. So we would go ahead and take our uh, positive probe and place it into the test socket. And then you come right over here to the collector, which would be the body of the transistor, and just touch your probe against that. And if you can see our multimeter right now, we have about 16 millivolts DC 17 which is below 20 which that means we're okay so we'll go ahead and move our test probe down to the other test socket and we'll go ahead and touch this transistor and there we go nice and steady at 15 millivolts okay make a liar out of me so but either way we're below 20 millivolts so we're good uh I have the benefit of having an oscilloscope to be able to adjust the waveform. What we are doing here is eliminating crossover distortion by this setting. Overdriving this uh, will not make this sound any better. It may sound better for a little while, but it will immediately burn up, and we want to avoid that. We want to try and keep these in service for as long as possible and make as little work in the future as we can. So having that, I guess, sort of covered. Uh, I should mention that if everything is electrically correct, the potentiometers, if we've done our due diligence of making sure everything's correct and we've cleaned our pots and all that good stuff, uh, these, these adjustments should be pretty quick to respond. So uh, they can creep. Uh, the older the, the system, the older the components, components that haven't been changed, a lot of guys like to try and keep the same caps in, uh, they're going to take a while uh, to, to adjust and they will also uh, have a tendency to creep. So if you check it and then you walk away from it and then you come back a little bit later, you might be surprised to see that your values have gone up uh, as it sat there warming up further on the bench uh, running and, and we want to make sure that we're, we're checking those. So I prefer to have everything correct before I start uh, and then we can make sure that everything is, stays correct. Uh, but that's my preference. So uh, at this point, uh, the amplifier has gone through a lot of work uh, and there's a lot of new stuff in here so uh, I noticed that when I finally was able to put some signal through it we had a little bit of distortion and we had a very muted effect a very muffled uh, uh, I guess muddy would be a good descriptor uh, that I've heard tossed around a lot and that's pretty accurate it sounds a lot like someone's put a wet blanket over the speakers so I have some royalty free music here and you're not going to get the full effect uh, but we might be able to get a little bit of an effect out of it. So uh, this is what our royalty-free music sounds like through our air amplifier. So it doesn't sound half bad. Uh, I'm sure that there's a little bit of a difference between the, uh, what, what I'm hearing and what you're hearing due to the compression of the, cam or the, uh, the microphone in the camera. So, but having said that, that is way better than what it was when, when I first uh, powered it up. Uh, common culprits in a system like this are the electrolytic capacitors, for I should say for distortion, for muff muffled sound like that, are capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, uh, developing high ESR and just generally noise from connections and issues, uh, and then the preamp board. So, 
The preamp board is very important in a jukebox type system because we are taking a very small signal from a uh, magnetic cartridge, uh, the, the tone arm of the uh, uh, phonograph section of a jukebox, and it's a very small signal. Now hopefully it's as clean a signal as possible, and we are going to basically put that right into the, uh, the preamp on the amplifier, and that's going to amplify that signal to a reasonable level so that we can then throw it through our driver system and and out our uh, our power outputs to our our speakers so as long as our speakers are are of decent quality uh, basically we just have to work on on making the transition through the rest of the amplifier very clean and transistors in this case the 2n2222 uh, which was the that those were the original transistors in the Seberg SHP3 uh, although you will not find one if you have the originals labeled as such because those transistors were uh, manufactured for Seberg, uh, at least those particular 2222s, and they were match graded. So if you look on the back of them, and there are three little uh, colored stripes, and on the front it has a 309 number, that is a Seberg part number, and those transistors were matched by either Seaver or by the manufacturer of the the uh, transistors so that doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that they're all still matched they will drift over time and those slight differences in in the electrical characteristics the gain characteristics and such of the transistors will cause some distortion and they can cause some muted um, uh, qualities uh, so we essentially replaced them with another uh, set of, of preamp transistors and they are not exactly correct and the reason why is because I have a whole bunch of those and I just wanted to put them in there to see that we were good electrically and that we could definitely amplify a signal and I'm waiting to get my my correct transistors in so these transistors are 2N4401s with which electrically uh, carry the same threshold voltages and breakdown voltages however they don't exhibit the same amount of current DC current gain so it's not going to sound as punchy uh, I, so I, I would expect a little bit of a, of a uh, you know just slightly lower performance but what I'm hearing is a very clean signal with no distortion and that is exactly what I wanted to hear when the new transistors come in it will sound even better and it will have a little bit more punch to it so I'm gonna go ahead and move this stuff off of the bench and I've got a, a little circuit set up and I'll kind of explain that and I can show you how we we can see that we're matching transistors correctly and we can also use the same uh, concept to check the uh, performance of our old transistors that came out of the board so let me go ahead and set that up for you and when I come back we'll, we'll, we'll get it all squared away okay so I'll try and keep this pretty brief uh, just off to the left of our our hand tech oscilloscope we have a, a breadboard set up with a, a single stage amplifier circuit uh, you can find a lot of examples of these but the best one that I've found uh, it's very simple safe to use uh, easy to breadboard uh, is is actually on Paul Carlson's web, uh, patreon page and uh, not that this is a commercial for Paul but uh, you know, for the price of a cup of coffee about every 30 days you can have access to all his schematics and plans uh, to take over the earth and I, I highly suggest you take advantage of him because he can explain a lot of this stuff a heck of a lot better than I can because he actually understands it and I'm just a sorcerer with a wand at this point so but I think I've got a pretty good handle on this right now we have a, a transistor in our uh, our circuit and I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust this gain pot so you can kind of see what happens here if we give that thing a little twist our waveform goes away and bring it back we just want to drive our waveform right up to distortion and my fingernail is catching and back to just about right there and that is going to be uh, our, our peak waveform that we're able to achieve so what does this mean well we are driving a signal into our circuit uh, from a signal generator that is one kilohertz at 100 millivolts peak to peak but if we read the amplitude uh, in our oscilloscope it's showing about 1.15 uh, uh, 
according to the Tektronix, it was, uh, it's kind of up around 1.18, so pretty close. Um, and this is, uh, the hand tech is bouncing a little bit. So from basically we're taking a signal that is uh, going in at 100 millivolts and we're getting out a signal that's uh, 1.15 millivolts. That's, that's a pretty decent amount of gain. Uh, and that's exactly what you're looking for in a good uh, amplifier transistor. Of course, you also need to make sure that you have low noise specifications. So over here we have our, our original transistors that, that have come out of our Seabird. And all of these have been tested in a similar way. Well, they've been te tested exactly the same way. So let me go ahead and pull this other one out of circuit. And I can go ahead and disregard that number for right now. But this is the bottom one. You'll see I've, I've got written down uh, 1.64 uh, volts. I'm going to go ahead and whack this in a circuit right here. And now you see our waveform is distorted. So let's go ahead and adjust our pot. And we'll drive this thing right out. Uh, make sure we're we're driven uh, to max peak and just at the edge of distortion and then bring it back just a hair and yeah. right about one one point six zero one point six four according to the tektronics and that is the number that I wrote down now uh, on, on our sheet so that is a really good amount of gain so uh, one more quick thing and, and of course that's the way all these were tested uh, one more quick thing can take a look here and you'll see that all of these are the uh, Motorola uh, 2N2222's now I just said a number that you're not reading <laughs> because it's not on there that is the Seabird part number these were manufactured for Seabird so they've also been graded and if you notice, there's three little stripes on the back, and they're all the same. Uh, you know, well, there's three different colors there, obviously. But let me go ahead and take a look here and see if our other ones have that. And same Seabird part number and same little paint scheme. And they're all like that. So, of course, they, are. they have been graded and matched and when they went in they were probably really really close in value but you can see now they are not 1.52 1.68 1.62 uh, there's a few of them that have the same value 1.54 1.54 1.42 now we're going a little lower and then this one is is 1.06 and there's a good reason for that and it's because it doesn't belong now it is a seabird no it's motorola transistor and this is the Seabird part number. This is probably an original transistor. But I almost guarantee it didn't come out of this board. Because that paint scheme is completely different. This is a different match grade. So this either came out of another board. It was a Friday. They pulled it out of the wrong bin. Not really sure. Maybe the, maybe the, maybe the guy was drunk that day. Who knows? Everybody has a bad day. Uh, so this one's clearly different. And again, if we just check our values uh, from our test, we can see you know, this one's clearly much, much lower in gain value than any of the, the rest of them. So when you are trying to track down uh, distortion, it's a really good place to go to. Uh, these need to match, and they need to match fairly closely. Now, just a step ahead, I do have the, the, the correct transistors. I was able to source those through Mauser. DigiKey did not have them. Uh, so those will be in at any moment, but I did have more testing to do that didn't really re require uh, anything more than a good solid electrical uh, uh, function. And also, uh, we do have transistors, again, 2N4401. Uh, this will work as an amplifier transistor, but it's not going to have the same amount of punch. It just doesn't have the same amount of gain. I'm going to go ahead and whack that in a circuit, and this is the one that we had in originally, so you'll see right away our waveform probably won't look quite right, or it's underdriven. So let's go ahead and give it a little, little tweak, and right into distortion, and back it up just a hair, and there we go, we're right back to that one point, uh, 1.16, 1.2 area, 1.12, excuse me. So. 
and I was able to match, I took a hundred of these and dumped them out and I matched ten of them precisely and that is why we have a nice crystal clear sound. Uh, not as much punch but it's definitely not muddy anymore and there's no distortion. A little tiny bit of hiss and I'm still not sure where that's coming from and it only happens at a pretty pretty decent amplitude but it's a little bit further back away from the from the speakers that I would like to hear any kind of a hiss from so I do have a little bit more work to do there but uh, hopefully in the next segment we will either have our new 2N uh, quad 2s in or uh, it, it, we'll be installing them so I don't know we'll both be surprised we'll see in just a minute <laughs> 